What is up, heroes? It's Simonite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we messed around with some more endings. We confirmed, well, basically confirmed, that Phi is also experiencing this weird time phenomenon that we are. And now we are finding ourselves in the archives, where we're going to have another room to solve. So, let's, um... Let's hop into it, I guess, right? The first thing that stood out again was this little plush up here. Isn't there something up there? What is it? I can't see from down here. Can... Can I grab a ladder or something? May I guess. What about this blue book here? Huh, one of these things is not like the others. You're right, it's a different color. Let's have a look at it. The blue book, what does it say on it? The stairway? Go up A0502. Alright, well, that seems very important. Nice blue hardcover book. I guess the title is The Stairway. Hey, there's something written on the back cover of this book. Yes, there is. And it's go up A0502. Alright. Astute observation. Some books written in Latin. That's the lock. And there's the safe. Alright. Don't probably need to concern ourselves with that just yet. What about over here? We've got a red book. This book is different too. Maybe we should take it with us. So this one is go up. And it says the stairway B0630. So obviously this book is related to the blue one. How so, though? A book with a red cover. Its title is Go Up. And this one, too. Yep. Okay. So now that we have found that, it looks like there's another book over here. Here's another book that doesn't match. And that makes three. And a lion. Okay. To the sun. C0518. And then there's a green book over here. Is this the last odd book out? I think so. I double-checked all the shelves. That's good to know. So, to the sun, and then, and line D0703. Okay, so it seems there are pairs of books that talk about different things. What do we have going on in here? Management number? Hey, there's a blue slot here. You think we're supposed to put something in it? It's an awfully small hole. What would we be putting in it? Like a SD card or a USB drive or something? What is this? It looks like some kind of chart. It says management number. What do you think it means? Well, pretty much the only thing that anyone's going to manage in this room is books. It's got the letters A, B, C, D, and then the numbers 1 through 8 running vertically. Maybe it's referring to the bookshelves in front of us? Hmm. Well, the bookshelf has 8 rows and so does this chart. There's a narrow bookshelf on either side and wider ones in the middle. Yes, they're shaped just like the diagrams on the chart. That's really helpful. So... So if A is on the far left, I guess, are we supposed to replace the books where we, where they're supposed to be? Let's see, this is to the sun, it says and lion on the back, D0703. This is not the and lion book though, right? This is the and lion one, so this would be D0703. Maybe I should write all this down. Hmm. So, D would be this far one over here, right? D0703, that would be like right about here, right? And, oh, but now that it's there, I can't look at it. <laughs> so, I, I do feel like I'm going to have to write this down, but I can't access the memo right from here. That's a bummer. Alright, well, well, we'll do it anyways. So, it was D0703. Zero, 03 and that's for and lion and then what else this book here is telling us that to the sun is c518 to the sun is c518 all right that's to the sun all right so we can do those two now you can place that one there, and, sorry, uh, to the sun was C518, so to the sun is the green one, yes. C123418 should be here. Okay, and now let's look at the other two remaining ones. So, go up is A52, and the stairway is 630, so go up is A52. Let's look at that. A52 is over here. 
and then the blue one is 630. So that would, or B630, right? So that would be over here. Well, what was that? I think it came from the other side of the wall. No, that wasn't the wall. I think it came from the bookshelf. W what's happening? Do we unlock a secret area behind the bookshelf? Oh, yes, we did. Oh, yes, we did. That's really cool, actually. Oh, is it going to stagger like a stairwell? It is. That's really neat. It sunk? I guess it was one of those trick bookshelves, where if you put the right thing in the right place, it does stuff. It's like a staircase. Well, if they were nice enough to give us stairs, I guess we should climb them. Okay, so we can climb those whenever we like. However, there's still some other stuff we haven't taken a look at, aka the other half of the room. So, there's some more books here, none of them look to be standing out. However, there's this box down here. There's a bike lock on this box. I don't think we'll be able to force it open, but no harm in trying. Actually, there is potentially harm, right? <laughs> like your bracelets. No harm in trying to forcibly take them off, and that could get you killed, right? Nope, well, I didn't think that'd work. I guess we'll have to open the lock if we want to open the box. Uh, well, did you see this die on top? Oh. Yeah, that is totally a die. So we have a green die. Does it... is it a fair die? It appears to have all the numbers we would expect. What does it have, though? Hmm. So we'll probably need to find the red and blue dice before we can do anything there. Let's check this desk. Blue ink. With ink written on it. Okay. Anything exceptional here? Ink? Well, I guess the mystery of the dark blue liquid was easier to solve than I thought. This looks like the sort of ink you'd use with a dip pen, but I don't remember seeing anything like that. Then again, I suppose you could use it for a lot of different things. It's true. And oh, here's our blue dye. Okay. Is it does it still have all six faces? Lovely. And then anything in this box? Oh. No, we we're just taking the box as a whole. So here is the music box. Notably looking at this here, right? There's no music coming from the music box, but I guess it's I guess it's just the box. I don't see a spring. Yeah, so we probably need something to make it work, but you'll notice the pattern here, right? It's um it's got the dots that would be like the dice faces, which we can see to the left and right. And so what I'd imagine is we need to get some paper, put some ink, or put some ink on that coil from the uh, the music box, and then roll that along some paper, and that's gonna give us the numbers for certain die, um, or for the for the dice, or something like that. Maybe we should check the movement. The movement? Sorry, movement means the internal pieces that actually make it work, like the cylinder here. Unfortunately, it looks like it's been fixed in place with a Phillips screw. Okay. So, I guess maybe then we need to... Okay, yeah, so here's our notebook paper. So we'll do some nice combining in a bit, but um, we're going to need to find a screwdriver in order to take that off. Now, what do we do over here? Well, we have our red dice, our red die, so we got that confirmed. And again, it has all of the faces we would expect. And then what do we have over here? A weight of 50 grams. Okay, so we're going to have another scale um, puzzle to solve. Anything in the drawer? Ah, a screwdriver, and it's a Phillips head. Lovely. Okay. We are rapidly making progress in this room. So let's combine this with our music box. And we have our cylinder. Let's combine the cylinder with our ink. And then let's combine this with our paper. Just need to roll across the paper. And there we go. Pattern transcribed. You found a report. To view it, visit the archive. Ah, oh, why are you making me visit the archive for that? I'm in the archive. <laughs> so mystery schematic. Um, is this it? No. This is about like the, the game as a whole, right? Yeah. So would it be under password or secret? No, it's not going to be under secret, is it? It's going to be under password. Where is it? Small computer terminal. No. Moon key, supplementary rules. No. Okay, password. Um, no. 
something earlier, I guess. Quantum computer, bracelet, phone. These are all related to the big picture. Oh, wow, all this stuff too. Okay. So where are we gonna find this pattern? Did it really, it said to look at it in the archives, right? Under the file, report. This is it, why is it called report? All right, well. Hmm. I mean, obviously it is, you know, all the six different dice faces. I admittedly don't know how to utilize this information yet though. Right? We have a pattern, more or less, but we don't really know how it relates to the three dice we do have a, a hold of at the moment. So, we'll hold off on that for now. I think we've done everything we can do down here. So, the top is a lot more narrow than I thought. Should I go? Well, with a big skirt like that, it might get kind of dangerous. Oh, if I just hike it up, I think I should be... And, uh, I think there's somebody down on all fours trying to not to look like he's staring up toward the bookshelf. Ah, <sighs> classic Sigma. S Sigma? What are you doing? I, uh, lost a contact. You don't wear any. Ow! You climb. Okay. Come on, Sigma. Uh, a doll? Okay, that's the only thing that's up here. Guess I might as well take it. Huh. Can't really go any further. This is a dead end. Are you done yet? Was there anything up there? Yeah, I'm heading back down now. So, did you find anything? No puzzles or anything like that. Just that stuffed animal? Yeah. Stuffed lion. Notably, I mean, it's got black, green, red. What is that red, like, sort of sun medallion? <laughs> that's a funny looking dog. Dog? I'm pretty sure that's a lion. This is a lion? It doesn't really look like one. Nah, it's a lion. Oh, hold on. There's a zipper on its back. Let's see what's inside. Ah, a memory card. Cool. That's probably going to go in here. All right, I've got this blue memory card. And there's a blue slot in the stand. Let's see what happens when I put it in then. What's going on here? It's showing the dice. I wonder what the puzzle is. Well, there's only one way to find out. Roll the six dice to move them to where they need to go. Choose which die you would like to move by clicking it. You can roll it vertically or horizontally by clicking and dragging the mouse or using the arrow keys. Oh, this is cool. This is actually quite cool. I wish I could rotate this. Um, or I wish I could just, I'm gonna write this down in sort of the orientation that we um, are looking at it, right? Because, can I write on this? No, I can't. Um, oops, no, darn, I don't get it. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so, yeah, I'm gonna write it down in our memo here that it's gonna be like five, and then I think six would be a little bit up from that and then four will be here, and then two here, and then one, and then three. And that should allow us to see a little bit more easily. Yeah, I wish I could move them over, but that's the idea here. So if, let's, hmm, which one do we want to consider first? Let's start with the five. How can we get five here, right? One, and then, so maybe, oh, I don't know the order of the, the die faces very well. So this would be, no, that's not the way I wanted to go. That's okay. Hello? Can I move it this way? There we go. Okay, so that would give us, no, that's not what I want. Okay, so I need to be more intentional. I'm not dragging it in the direction that I want to move it. It's either vertical or horizontal. Got it. So that's not going to work. Could I conveniently get this five over there? Hmm, I could actually. If I move this to the left and then forward three times and then like that, that currently has five on its on its face just to be safe. 
Or wait, no. It, no, it does, right? It's face up, it's on the side, now it's face down. So that would lock that one in. Which makes me think that this other red one is gonna be for the, um, the six, right? Oh, I wonder, is it face up or is it gonna be face down? Because I want the five face on the tile, or do I want it face up off of the tile? Do they mention that in the rules? Hmm, well, well, we'll try it this way and see what we can do. So this other one we need is six, right? Where is the six face here? It is right there. So what we can do is actually kind of rotate it this way and then, oh wait, no, actually that's gonna work for the opposite direction, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, that's not gonna work very conveniently. Yeah, and I'll need four, a length of four in order to fully kind of rotate through, so. I don't think that's gonna work very well. Unfortunately. Hmm. It is possible, I mean, for some reason, I mean, it's tempting to not want to cross other tiles, but I might have to bring the top blue one through the tiles of the pattern to get to the where the six is right now, and instead use this red one to make the two. So where is the two on this? I just like don't even know, okay. So if we go up here, we can then go left and left and then down, and that'll solidify the two. Can we get a six over here though? Um, we can actually, very conveniently, with this blue dice, or with this blue die. If we go here, wait, then it would be on its side. Mm, that's not as convenient as I had expected. If I bring it down though, and then, mm, no, that's still not gonna work very nicely, honestly. I'd like for this six to be on the left side so I could kind of slot it in there. What if I were to bring it down like this? Nah, even then, it's still not working super well. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, yeah, there's no way to have the six kind of facing on the left side of the die, so I can drop it in from the right outside of the shape. And I'm not seeing a way to end up with six on the right side either, in the same row that I could, you know, drop it in. And it's not like I can rotate the die. So, I don't think this six is actually, or this blue die is gonna give us that six at the end. And if that's not the case, maybe it's this one here. Actually, hmm, that doesn't seem super likely either. Given that the six is face up right here, I wouldn't be able to get it face down where that six is necessary. So, if that's the case, because if I were to move this to the left, it'll be on the left side and I'd have to drop it in that way. And if I move it to the right, it's on the right side. So I don't, yeah, again, I don't think I can use either blue die to do that. So then what about these ones here? This six face would not be able to drop in that way. Right, so it's gotta be this one actually. Where is the six face though? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, so you can see that this one is going to uh, drop in nicely for us. I'm gonna move this one out of the way for the time being so we can bring this in. Oops, just to confirm. This is indeed the six facing down, lovely. Now we can put that one back. That is a three, right? Or wait, what? Let me check. Yeah, five is gonna be face down there. Six is there, okay. We are rapidly making progress. Well, maybe not rapidly, but 
We have three, one, and four left. Let's see if we can figure out this four, right? What's going to be an easy way to do it? Hmm. So it's not going to be this one because we're not going to be able to drop it in there. Where is four on this side? This is potentially it, but not quite actually. So four is actually going to be this one. And you can see the four is going to be face down. Oh, but it's going to be three spaces away. So it's not going to be enough. So maybe the four has to be something else. Ooh, I'm tempted though. I really want to make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> I really want to make sure um, it's supposed to be face down instead of face up. You know, I'm actually, I think it's probably face up. I'm, I'm going to go back. Shoot, what should I do? What's wrong? Do you not know where to put the dice? Looks like we need more information. Does it? Roll the six dice to move them to where they need to go. Choose which die you would like to move by clicking on it. You can roll it vertically or horizontally. So it doesn't really say. I would bet that it's got to be face up, though. Even though that's not what came to mind first, it, that sounds like it would be more intuitive. So, even if it's a painstaking process, let's see if we can do that again. So, part of what's interesting to consider is if something needs to be face up, it needs, on a particular um, square or tile here, it needs to be face up on in that row um, that the you know die is rolling in, or it needs to be on its side in an adjacent row. So if we want, for example, this 5 here, and we know that 5 shows up here, that works out very conveniently. Um, but what about the six? So if we look at this one, six is face up here. So six is never going to be an option for this red die here. Unless, unless I rotate it on its side. And then, nope, not like that, like that. Because when you rotate it on its side, you can, you can essentially spin one side. This kind of reminds me of like a, like a Rubik's cube type thing. But anyways, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So then we have two, four, one, and three. Two is not going to be with this top blue die. Unless I move it this way like that. And then down. No, it's still not going to be... That's still not gonna work. So I'm gonna leave that off for the side for now. This two actually works perfectly. So we'll do that for the time being. Now we have three, one, and four. The four is not going to be this um, die here. So let's think, could it be the three or the one? Or rather, what's gonna be the four? Oh, it's totally gonna be this blue die here. Right? Or no, it's too far away. Because it's not going to be... The 4 isn't going to be face up when it's there. Unfortunately. So we'll move that back in place. And that means the 4 is going to be this guy here. Which makes sense. You can see the 4 is here. And if we were to rotate this down one, now it's going to move 4. Which means uh, if we rotate it 4 times, it's going to cycle through completely. And not be what I wanted. What? Oh, that's because it's already face down one. Hmm. So is this the four then? And is this going to be the six? Ooh. And then we have a three and a one, right? Hmm. This doesn't seem to be convenient for either of these. Where is the one here? It's there. Could do... Not that. No, that's still not going to be enough. Hmm. I'm close, but not quite there. What I can do is rotate this like that and put that three in place. 
But then the question is, how do I get this one over here? It's so close. I think what I need to do, oops, no, you stay there, is go down here. No, nope, come on, no, that's not the one I want. Like this, and then I can move this to the side. And then I need to rotate, or basically spin that one side while adding spaces between where it'll go. So if I do this, maybe this will work actually. Oops, that was one too many. So we'll do this, and then we should be good. Okay, um, three, one, four, two, six, five. So I guess maybe we need to, maybe we don't know which die or color die need to be in specific areas. Maybe that's the case, but either way, this didn't work. Three, one, four, two, six, five. Three, one, four, two, six, five. All right, well, um, that's unfortunate. I think I need to look around some more. <laughs> I know Luna had suggested maybe we need more information, but I wasn't sure if that was the case or not, and I felt like we could have attempted it, but I guess we need more information. So the question then becomes, where can we find more information? I think we're going to do that here. The question is, what is this lock going to be? Hmm, as puzzles go, it's pretty straightforward. We just need the right five digit number. Enter the correct numbers to open the lock. We need a five digit number. And we have the blue die plus the green die times the, the red die. That's not gonna give us a five digit number though. So the question is, how do we use the dice to figure this out? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Ugh, no luck. Come on, you can do it. I think what I'm going to have to do is try to weigh the the dice and maybe use those numbers. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. If you put things on both sides, then you could compare them, but do we actually have anything to weigh? Well, the scale had a die and a weight on it when we found it. We've got three dice. I think we should be able to figure out what they weigh using this weight. You can place the dice by dragging them to where you want them. Pressing the check button on the scale will compare their weight. When the scale is activated, the check button switch to the reset button. Click the reset button and move on to another measurement. But at the same time, this is still only relative, right? So... Oh, I see. They're gonna be all the dice I was going to say, to find exact weights, the only way this would work is if the dice were all multiples of 50, right? So, alright, let's see here. So green is heavier than 50. Right? Okay. So if green is heavier than 50, let's see how blue compares to 50. Blue is heavier than 50, okay. And red is the same as 50. Alright, so I'm going to write that down. Red is 50. And now green and blue are both more than, than 50. But what we can do is we can use more than one die to compare. So if red is 50 and this is 50, then we can compare to green. And that means green is 100. So green is 100. And that means blue is probably going to be 150. Yeah, I was going to say the only way to find exact values. Wait, what? Oh, interesting. So, blue is not 150. And in fact, blue is probably also going to be 100. Oh, wait, no, I assumed they were 50 each. So, if blue is 150, this would be the green plus the 50 
Yeah, exactly. So blue is 150. I almost messed that up, but there we go. And I believe um, I don't I, I don't remember exactly what the thing was. I don't think the scale is going to unlock a box when we full when we fulfill a certain condition or something. It certainly doesn't look that way. And I think all we're supposed to do with it is weigh things. But yeah, the only way you could get exact values there is if things were multiples of 50, and you could use the weights and the die and the dice to your advantage. But now we have numbers associated with each of the dice, and we can get a five-digit number. I wonder how peculiar or particular they're going to be about this, but I, I would imagine they're also testing pet or PEMDIS or BEDMAS, depending on where you learned it, but the order of operations, right? So if green is 100 and red is 50, you would do the multiplication before the addition, right? So 100 times 50 is going to be 500, and then you add 150, hmm, that's going to get you 700, which is not good enough. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, I think that's the same that you would get if you were to do the other order of operations. So we did it, I guess, properly, or no, it, wow, I, so I messed that up. So if we do the proper order of operations, we get 650 in total. Um, that should be our answer, right? It's 100 times five, which is 500 plus 150, which would be 650. But if you do it from left to right, Blue plus green would be 250 times 5, which would be um, 1,250, right? So that would be like our, our incorrect answer. The wrong order of operations. Hmm. So I don't really know, I mean... I guess we can just input the number 650 here, right? That's all I can really think of. Nope, I guess not. Um, we can try 1250. No. Is there a way to like, like a button to press to see if it's right or not? Or is it just going to unlock when we get the correct number? Hmm. We weighed each of the die, or each of the dice, and what else can we do? We need more information for that terminal in the center. I feel like this has got to be the next step. Let's back up a little bit. Hmm, what should I do? I don't know. Do we have any items to work with? Just the weights and the die. Normal blue die. A green die. Nothing on my sleeve. You're not making it sound any less suspicious. Well, it's perfectly ordinary. Okay, and then... Well, this die looks perfectly ordinary. Perfect. And then... Examine this. Says 50 grams. I guess this is a weight? Yes, I think you usually use weights like this to weigh things, but I suppose you could do other things with it. If you put in a snowball, you could get a little extra oomph. That's not what I meant. Yeah, Luna's, Luna's too sweet for that. Hmm. A five-digit number. I'm confident with how we weighed the dice, so I feel good about their weights. This is a 50 gram weight, so it's not like we need to convert kilograms to grams and that'll give us extra digits to work with. Oh! <laughs> I just realized, I um... <laughs> you guys are probably so upset. Yeah, so, obviously, <laughs> 50 times 100 is not 500, it's actually 5,000. <laughs> wow, that's obnoxious. I'm sorry, guys. I promise I'm better at mental math when I'm not recording. <laughs> so, the green times the red is going to give us 50 times 100, which is 5,000. And then when we add blue, we get 5,150. That's going to be our number.
<laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I am so sorry. I know that would frustrate me if I were watching. But anyways, there we go. Unlocked. Good job. Let's open it. What do we find inside? Ooh, I wonder if this is someone's diary. Sounds like fun. Book with bookmark. Okay, let's look at the bookmark. Nothing on the cover. I wonder what kind of book this is. Let's open it up. I, I can't read it. I think this is Latin. Looks that way. Well, it's not a total loss. There's a bookmark at least. Hmm. Maybe we should take that. You found a bookmark to visit him. Go to the archive. Okay. To the archive we go. Report bookmark. This is what's going to be our vital information. So if I open up the memo, um, I really should erase this, honestly. But what we can do is we can actually just trace this here. So what we'll do is do a little bit of a red here and then some red here and then blue and blue and green and then green and that'll give us our information. What else do we have in here? So I'm gonna, actually I should just, <laughs> I should just do a blue six, a blue one, a red five, a red two, and a green four, and a green three. And I'd like to compare that just to be safe. Yes, okay, so that's gonna be our correct orientation. We will hang on to that. And now we can do that central terminal. Thank you guys for your patience as I mess up my mental math. I promise, <laughs> I promise I'm better at it outside of uh, recording. But anyways, now we can actually give a go. So five needs to be a red and six needs to be a blue. Let's, let's start with those. So five needs to be red. Five we can pretty easily make. Um, no, we can't actually, <laughs> not with that one. But we can with this one, I think. Five needs to be the far one here. So what I can do then is just rotate the five up twice. Nope, like this, to kind of spin that side. And then this will be face up five when it's there. Lovely. Okay, so we're done with that one. Now let's look at the, actually let's look at the red two. See how we can do that here. This one will not be face up here, but what I can do is move this one out of the way. And then while the two is on its side, actually, I don't think I can spin that easily. Actually, no, I can, like this. All right, so that covers that. And then six and four. So six is on its side right now. Can I easily put that over there? I don't think so. Let's look at this one. This one seems to be more conducive to a six because all I need to do is roll this up like that and we're good. Lovely, which means the next blue is going to be a one. Actually, I want to do one of the green fours first though. And that's actually, hmm. I think this will work out. Actually, no, it's one too early. So what I can do is, what can I do here? To get four to sit in there nicely. I can do this. I need to kind of turn it on its side like that. And then I can rotate this one over that way, and then, oh wait, no, I just did the opposite. I was doing it where it was like face down, the, the first way I was attempting to do this puzzle. Okay, so, what is good to know though is that I can bring this over like this, and now all I need to do is rotate it down a little bit. Hmm. From here. How can I... Because it's on... It's not on the side I want it to be on. And then it never really will be.
That worked. But that felt a little bit haphazard, honestly. But it, it worked, so we take those, right? So we gotta bring that blue over to make it a one. How are we gonna do that? Can bring it down this way. We need to put it on its side and then we can rotate it over. Almost. Oh, I see. So I'm gonna do this and then we can kind of bring it over. No, that's not what I wanted, but um, we can do this and then this should work actually. Yeah, cool. Sorry, it's tough to actually explain the thought process with this. Hmm. There we go. Oh wait, did I move one of them? Yeah, what did I do with the two? There we go. <laughs> I was like waiting for the completed sort of click and I was like, huh? Yes, did it. Good work, Sigma. That was amazing. That was a fun puzzle. I wish I had a better way to formalize what the different moves you can make with each dice, or which, with each die are. Um, it felt like I was, I had some d sense of a strategy of spinning or rotating die in a way that you had one side on its side so that it wasn't changing its like, I guess, coordinate in one of the dimensions. Um, and then you can move it along in one of the other rows and then you could, you know, rotate it as needed. There was, there was definitely some strategy there, oh, but it's tough to formalize. It was cool though. Anyways, the colors changed. Do you think, let's take a look. All right, so this is gonna be our escape password. Thank you again to those of you who clarified that green is escape and blue is hidden file. Wait, is this? Yeah, it's the password to the safe. Lovely, so we found that. The next question is, where's that hidden file password? Roll the six dice. Okay, so now, this is obviously what we use to get the hidden file password. Is it where we do them all face down? Because I could try to do that. Do I have any other information to work with for this? I don't think so. So let's try it, I guess. So blue six face down at the top, red five face down as well. Let's look at this one here. So that's five face down, six. Um, let's see here. Face down though, right? Yeah, nope, you go back there. Okay. Now the green four. This will actually, I think, work out very nicely. Ah, almost. Not quite. What I can do... This will be on its side as well, I think. Or no, that'll work nicely. So that's four face down as well. And now we've got two, one, and three. And that's a red two on the side. I think this will actually work out really nicely too. Oh, almost. So, what can I do here then? Um, I can do that, but that's not gonna change much about that. Hmm. 
How can I get a red face two or red two face down there? Because it's not like I'm looking at the other red die and not having a lot of luck either. There we go. All right, now we just have the one and the three. Where is the one here? There it is. Close, but not quite. Same here. No, I need a little bit more space, I think. Hmm. Almost. Is it possible? Surely. I mean, I could also get the three there by doing that. And then I could put the one here. No, go to the right. There we go. Oh, but it's gotta be a four. So maybe that's the, uh, the solution here. So I put the four there like that. And then it's really just this blue one. Which I could get by doing this. Yeah, that is a four, right? Yep. Okay, let's get this blue six. Hmm. Almost. I get the blue six there, face down. Oh. Gotta sort of move the six over one row. There we go. Woo! All right, I'm glad that actually, I'm glad that worked. Part of what was also interesting, actually, um, when you think about that is given how two of the dice were interchangeable for each color, all of the dice were essentially equivalent, meaning there is there exists a set of moves you can take for any die to put it in the exact same situation as any of the other die. So there's actually a lot more flexibility with that puzzle than you would think. But anyways, good job. Excellent work. All right, so I think this is a different password. <laughs> yes, so that is our hidden file password. And with that, we are good to go. This is the safe, right? Yeah, it's just like the ones I saw in the AB room and the crew quarters. If we enter the right password, it should open up, I think. Okay, let's look at our passwords. We're gonna go with star, sun, sun. Star, sun, sun. And that'll get us a nice hidden file. Awesome, it's open. Good job, Sigma. And then we have one more password to go and we are in the clear. Overall, I like the archives. It was pretty solid. Um, I, I messed up that mental math there, but otherwise, 
I think the flow of the puzzles was really nice. Not too obtuse, required some good deduction, and um, the dice puzzle was actually pretty fun. I wish I could formalize each type of move, right? If you wanted to, for a given side, if you wanted to, I don't know, change its row or something like that, what is a series of moves you could make in order to do so? Because I feel like I figured out those types of moves, but but it, was, it wasn't as formal as I would have liked. All right, and then we have Sun Sun Moon. And with that, I think we're in the clear. Ha! It opened. And I believe we should find a note from Zero saying that somebody has to participate in each AB game, right? Good, good. Well done. So, what have we got this time? First, a map. It says Floor B. The one we found in the cabin said Floor A. So did the map in the infirmary. Then that means Floor A must be the top floor, right? We did come down here on the elevator, after all. So it would seem. There's more stuff in there. Oh, I know what those are. <laughs> of course. Yeah, key cards. These ones have moons on them. They must be the moon keys the announcer was talking about then. That means we can play the AB game. Correct. We got two, just like with the sun keys. As a pair, Luna and I should only need one. Then I'll take the other one. So, what's next? A piece of paper. It has something written on it. Here are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not an option. If both parties refuse to vote, then everybody gets penalized. In other words, one person out of every color group of three has to vote. In other words, we can't all abstain. We have to vote. Anyway, what else is there in the safe? Only one thing, a key. Is this the exit key? Looks like it. I bet on it. <laughs> we can open the door. Great. Let's go. So yeah, this was cool. Um, I really liked, I still really liked the control rooms puzzle with the power lever and stuff. I feel like that was 100% up my alley. <laughs> but the dice puzzle in this room was also really cool. So without further ado, presumably the lock for the door. Right now it says lock. You guys ready? I'm gonna open the door. Go ahead. I'm all set. Then here we go. Three, two, one, and... You found it. Go us. Pats on the back. Let's see who we meet up with and where. Potentially the crew that exited the garden, right? Oh, no, it looks like we're in Warehouse B. Is this another warehouse? Are we actually going to have a chance to like investigate Warehouse B now? Because if so, I mean, we've only had a glimpse of it. We saw the writing on the wall that one time mentioned something about like the ninth line. I've been curious to actually take a look. We also haven't made it to the white chromatic doors yet, right? So I'm really eager to see what we're going to find here and to see what happens afterwards, right? Look at the flowchart. Where are we on this flowchart? Okay, we are getting close to the point where we're going to find out what the other crews thought, right? What happened in their rooms? Which rooms they went to? Because it's not always a guarantee that they went in the same rooms from previous timelines, right? And then there's still everything going on with Quark and Alice to happen. So that's going to be exciting. But of course, as you probably suspect, we're going to find out in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I liked the archives a lot. I thought it was a really solid puzzle room. I think it might have been a little bit helpful to have some sort of direction. Uh, for indicating that the hidden file password would be when the dice are face down as opposed to face up. I think I got a little bit lucky in that that was actually what came to me first. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I can see that being a little bit tough to, to figure out. Um, that that's what you need to do. You know, the puzzle itself is a similar puzzle to the, the actual password. But anyways, um, I'm looking forward to what else we have in store. Whatever chaos, whatever drama is going to come with the next Ambidex game. And I'll... Look forward to seeing you guys then. But until the next episode, this is Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.